Man, my dead chicken is already running off on me. Ugh. Hi guys. It is another hot, sticky, dusty day. Dusty day here in the end times. Where it is actually Tuesday has snuck up on me. Uh, Tuesday, April 25th, 2024. I have been packing my gas-sucking truck. Been so busy. My dump the Trump Dehive Roundup just completely uh, escaped my attention yesterday on Earth is Fucked Day. And uh, so I woke up this morning and said, God damn it, we forgot to check in uh, with Donald Trump. So somehow, guys, I will find the energy to. Uh, <laughs> To bring you uh, a smattering of the latest reasons to uh, to dump the Trump Day. Good God, where to even? So we're going to start uh, our dump the Trump Day high roundup rant with RFK. Uh, you know, people thinking that there's only two candidates in this race, and uh, so we have a new poll which is saying uh, pretty much what I have been kind, kind of hearing through the uh, grapevine as well, that RFK's candidacy, RFK Jr. candidacy hurts Trump more than Biden, new NBC News poll finds. And uh, the only Trump tar that I run around with uh, she is voting for RFK because RFK, he, he sure as shit should have the anti-vaxxer vote. Uh, and for the record, I am not an anti-vaxxer. People have confused me with being an anti-vaxxer. But, it, and, and, and I still hear from these goddamn Trump tards uh, talking about uh, these clueless fucking morons uh, getting jabbed and they forget that Donald Trump is vaccinated, he is recommending everybody get vaccinated, and he's taking full credit for Operation Warp Speed. Yet, the, the, these, these clueless anti-vaxxers are, are, are still voting for Donald Trump because they think he's an anti-vaxxer. So anyway, uh, so it's one more reason to vote for RFK. I mean, I, mean I, I admit I'm not voting, guys, but if I were voting, I would vote for RFK. And not just because for anybody listening to this in New York who is not voting for RFK, you know that he wants to ban fracking. Uh, and, and But of course he has no chance of being elected. There is that. But uh, you can now, you can, you, you can kill two birds with one stone. You, you can state how absolutely disgusted you are about the race between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Vote RFK, vote against fracking, and steal votes from Trump. Now, my guess is it's, it's going to come out in the wash. All of this... It's just one more fucking distraction as everybody beats up on RFK because of his little uh, his little slip up about the V word. Uh, but the anti-vaxxer vote is going to RFK, uh, so they will be stealing for for Trump. My guess, as they say, is about the same number of votes are going to get stolen from each of them. And we're going to end up with one of the fuckers. Uh, and it doesn't make any fucking difference. But anyway, this is about uh, Donald Trump, not about RFK. Uh, this story by from Medium by Richard Lowenthal is a long, good lord, this man. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. Many Americans are starting to lose it, but what exactly are we losing? 
well, I wish we were uh, uh, losing Donald Trump, is what I... Uh, okay, let's just read a... Uh, just a little bit. Uh, la, 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 la. Sure, lots of us, maybe the majority, are anxious and fearful about our collective future, but only a small minority is actively trying to destabilize our government, topple our society, reinvigorate racism and misogyny, and support fascism and tyranny. Unfortunately, it only takes a small minority of loud, committed social arsonists to undermine and eventually ruin life for everybody else. And that is exactly what is happening in the U.S. more and more under the influence of far-right media, Donald Trump and MAGA. The problem is we have got millions of people now who believe total fabricated nonsense lies in other words blah 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 these folks and there are millions of them despite being in the minority are truly living in a paranoid fact-free upside-down reality and their intense partisan lies and bullshit have been deeply infecting our body politic and literally driving many of us to despair and utter frustration. <clears throat> to be clear, this loud, aggressive minority compares, comprises the primary group that is freaking out and even losing it in the U.S. Yet the horrible irony is that these committed true believers don't feel like they are losing it. Rather, they feel strong and powerful because they're in possession of the truth. They believe and are eager to undermine, destroy, and replace our current society. Such true believers are and have always been among the most dangerous human beings on the planet. They are often incredibly destructive, yet of course they always believe that they are doing good and beneficial things. They are utterly self-deluded and they are also increasingly losing it. Well, we shall see if... Uh They will uh, be losing what's in uh, Portland. Here is an opinion piece for USA Today talking about how Donald Trump has turned the Republican Party into an extortion racket. I always thought the Republican Party was an extortion racket, but I guess he's just taking it... Uh, I'd like to congratulate Donald Trump on the speed with which he has turned the Republican Party into something resembling an extortion racket. Uh, just, you know, just, just looking at this, uh, oh my God, just looking at his, his, his face, it makes me want to puke. The Republican Party is now nothing but a Donald Trump piggy bank. Yep. Selling his Bibles. Well, anyway, guys. Uh, I'm out. White House staffer says Trump got a mushroom boner watching January 6th on TV. This is from Dash McIntyre in Medium.com. All right. Donald Trump is currently being prosecuted for the insurrection attempt on January 6th where he invited the rioters 
to D.C. riled them up and incited them to storm Congress to stop the steal and refused to ask his supporters to leave the Capitol while they were assaulting and killing police officers and looking for Mike Pence to publicly hang high. Trump and his lawyers have denied claims he was jerking off in the White House while watching the violence unfold on TV and have offered several other excuses for why he was derelict in his presidential duty to stop the violence. Number one, I was praying. You know me, no one's a bigger lover of God, Jesus, and the Holy Goblin, or whoever the third one is. I had my nose deep into a Bible because anyone who knows me knows that every afternoon after lunch from 1 to 4 p.m. I am in doing intense Bible studying. On January 6th, I was reading the book of prophecies. I don't think there is a book of prophecies, which I remember very clearly because I found a prophecy in there that predicted the 2020 election would be stolen from a wise king with luscious gold hair and big hands. Excuse number two. I was talking to my guy in Kenya who has finally found out some real interesting thing about Obama's birth certificate that will blow your mind when I reveal them. Number three. I was calling all my favorite charities and giving them big, tremendous donations over the phone. You just never heard about it because I told all the charities, charities to keep it totally anonymous because you know me, I am a very quietly modest person who does not like to make a big deal about myself. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Alright, and the last one, uh, I was having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with my son Eric telling him that no matter what happens in life, I'll always love, ah, Jesus Christ, I can't finish that sentence. Fine, I was watching the riot on television and I was jerking off and hoping the rioters would hang Mike Pence on live television. You happy? I wanted Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, and Ron Johnson to burn all the slates of electors signed by the state governors and instead approve the slates of electors that Rudy Giuliani schemed up to claim the state elections were full of fraud. I wanted to see the rioters break in all the windows of the Capitol building and break down all the doors and defecate in all the Democrats' offices and steal all of Nancy Pelosi's personal things and destroy all the desks and chairs in the White in the House and Senate rooms and light the Capitol building on fire and watch it burn to the ground. I wanted to be able to institute martial law and order the military to start arresting all the Democrats and putting them in internment camps. I wanted to fly the governors of Georgia, Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan to D.C. and hang them too so their bodies could dangle as threats to anyone else thinking about not getting in with my new MAGA agenda and their bodies would slowly rot and be picked apart by birds. And then I wanted to go golfing and then maybe jerk off a second time to the CNN commentary about a president hanging his VP. I think it was the last one. Uh, of course, the Ten Commandments of the Trump Bible obviously leading with thou shalt vote for Donald Trump. Don't forget wear your MAGA hats. Yes. Uh, thou shalt have no gun control laws. Yes. Uh, I shall always commit adultery but never pay any porn stars for it. I shall, shall steal the election if Biden gets too many votes again. All right. This one is the one uh, I don't, I've heard of this guy, Miles Taylor. I wish I had been wrong. So, uh, 
who is Mike Taylor. Uh, this uh, an interview uh, with him. Uh, unlike many others at the highest levels of Trump's regime, Mike Taylor, who served as chief of staff in the Department of Homeland Security, spoke out about Trump's unfitness for office as author of the 2018 New York Times uh, anonymous editorial. Uh, since then, Taylor has written two books, A Warning, uh, and blowback, a warning to save democracy from Trump's revenge. And then, uh, his new paperback edition of blowback has just been published, incorporating an argument that Trump's second administration will be far more competent and formidable in its assault on American democracy and the rule of law than the first one was. Uh, so this is an interview with Miles Taylor and I'm not gonna, I, I'm just gonna do kind of a, a, a mashup. I'm not gonna go through all the questions so it's gonna be a little disjointed but I did like, I did like this former uh, Chief of Staff for Homeland Security under Donald Trump. These are tumultuous times and it's hard not to feel a mix of concern and responsibility. Almost every day it seems like we're witnessing the fragility of our democratic institutions and the ongoing threats to stability. This is not just a Donald Trump phenomenon. Populism is here to stay and it will be the greatest test of human freedom in the modern age. Uh, last year I released this book to explain in precise detail what would happen if Donald Trump or another MAGA figure uh, took the White House, including the specific ways they would weaponize American government against their foes. Many people dismissed the warning. I wish I had been wrong, but Donald Trump has borne out my predictions. Since the publication of Blowback, he has let slip his true intentions again and again. Trump admitted he wanted to use the Justice Department against his enemies if re-elected, saying the genie had already been let out of the box. He admitted he would purge civil servants in mass vowing retribution to quote destroy the deep state by quote firing all of the corrupt actors in our national security and intelligence apparatus. He admitted he would reinstate policies like the so-called travel ban to the United States that would be quote even bigger than before he, had, he hinted that he would seek to deploy the military on U.S. soil to enforce his edicts. Quote, the next time I'm not waiting, he even admitted he would govern like a dictator at least on day one. Uh, So this is, uh, what would be the differences between Donald Trump, uh, the revenge of Donald Trump and the first time around, three differences between 2024 and 2016. First, he is more unhinged. Second, he is less restrained by semi-rational advisors, most of whom are gone. And third, he was vastly more, he has vastly more command and influence over his followers in the GOP than ever before. Add those up, the sum is one of the greatest dangers to America in the modern age. So what 
I'm going to ask what version of Donald Trump are we seeing today? Uh, Mike's answer, his apparent cognitive decline is evident. The man is unwell. More alarming than that, he sees winning the presidency as life and death. In his mind, if he loses, he's liable to lose his fortune, his freedom, and his future. Literally, he's rightfully worried he'll go to prison if he doesn't retake power and try to use that power to prevent such an outcome. You do the math. A man like that is more dangerous than any presidential candidate in American history. Citizens should be wary of a leader who claims to be a man of the people but quietly detests them, who brags about being a strategic genius but is impulsive, who styles himself as a deal maker but readily breaks promises, who claims subordinates are devoted with unconditional loyalty but is paranoid about a disloyal bureaucracy conspiring against him, who is charming in private but pugilistic in public, well, so am I, uh, who calls for jailing opponents but frets about going to jail, who manipulates the media for personal gain but attacks the lying press as enemies, who vows to root out corruption but abuses official powers, who knows that small lies are not believable but big lies become gospel, and who pledges to make the country great again while plotting to sabotage its very foundations. This is not Donald Trump. This is a description of Adolf Hitler. I will let other people interpret these similarities. There you go. Uh, anyway, guys, we can go on and on with this, but I understand I'm to myself and boring the dog. Oh, and I gotta clean up the scraps around Doomsday Trailer and head it back to New York, baby, and uh, probably be arriving back here in Dundellan, Florida on Election Day, otherwise known as National Donut Day on November 5th, 2024. 20, uh, I'm aiming to be back to Doomsday Trailer. I am on my way back to New York tomorrow, baby. My guys. <laughs>